Something I, I can't describe from a physics based perspective. Tapped away. Three hours outside of Las Vegas, down a hidden dirt road, this is Area 51. If you're driving from Las Vegas, after you pass the town of Alamo, you will hit the E.T. Fresh Jerky Shop. Shop. They've got lots of fun Area 51 extraterrestrial alien themed stuff, ton of snacks, water, and it's a perfect pit stop before you get to the extraterrestrial highway. to the extraterrestrial highway. This is Nevada Highway 375 and it is the gateway towards Area 51 and the city of Rachel, Nevada. This sign is obviously very popular for tourists and locals alike to come and take a picture proving that you went to Area 51. terrestrial highway sign is the alien research center it's a really fun spot it's part museum part research center mostly gift shop but it's super cool and the people here are really nice stop on in grab yourself some area 51 gear some alien gear and we'll continue on down the road towards rachel nevada and area 51 road just behind me here is Mailbox Road, which is the intersection where you can stop and see the famous black mailbox. Now the original black mailbox was removed by the owner in August 2014, but in its place they have another mailbox that you can stop and uh, check out. People have left notes for the aliens, um, little postcards, presents, trinkets, there's also locks just like fun stuff that people have left to interact with the site. Good news, if you happen to have missed the first extraterrestrial highway sign, there is a second one just outside of the town of Rachel, Nevada. So be sure to stop here, get that perfect Area 51 selfie. Inside of the town of Rachel, Nevada, we have the Little Ailey Inn. This is a bar, a restaurant, a motel, and an RV park. Go inside, sit at the bar or at any of the tables, order a drink, 
have some food and look through their gift shop. Taking a look around the back side of the restaurant, you can see pictures of UFOs and extraterrestrial activity from all over the world. If you follow this wall over towards the left, you can see pictures and signed photos of celebrities, military crews, scientists, and UFO enthusiasts. Highly recommend checking out the little alien while you are in Rachel. Stay the night if you can. Make sure you go and grab some food before you head back out onto the road towards Area 51. Has conducted for the past 50 years classified experiments involving extraterrestrial technology. For those of you that watched uh, one of my other videos on the Nevada National Security Site, we talked about the atomic history of Nevada and the world, and the Nevada National Security Site being divided up into areas, most notably Area 51 being this property behind me. If you want to check out that video, go ahead and click the link above. So, uh, right now, a little bit we'll talk a little bit about the history of area 51 this part of uh, the property was built in 1955 to help test um, new aircraft secret aircraft during um, the cold war to test against the soviets so you can see this is absolutely in the middle of nowhere it's about a two and a half three hour drive to the town of rachel which is the nearest civilized area and it's another half hour of a very small dirt road to these back gates of area 51. Area 51 became synonymous for alien or extraterrestrial activity during the 50s and 60s. During this time this base was testing aircraft that was unknown to other militaries around the world and unknown to the general population. Creations like the U-2 aircraft were some of the first ways that alien technology became synonymous with Area 51. That craft was designed and tested here at Area 51. The Air Force has been accused from time to time of hiding information about UFO. What do you have to say to that kind of thing? Well, these charges are absolutely untrue. Actually, the United States Air Force releases statistics on the UFO phenomena through the Department of Defense press desk periodically. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing to hide at all. The craft was something that was so secret that not only did the general public not know about it, but other members of the military in different branches didn't know about it either. That meant that when um, other pilots would be up in the air doing uh, normal routine things, they would see these small lights like way high above them, not know what they were, and call them in as unidentified flying objects. I'm here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. The military at the time could not release the information on what it was. They could confirm what it was because this was very secret technology they were trying to hide during the Cold War against the Soviets. So they had to say that this was either natural phenomenon or high atmospheric weather testing. 
these sorts of sightings kept going on and happened over the years, dozens and dozens of times with these high-tech aircraft that the government was working on. Now, some people say that the technology actually came from aliens and that the craft were not being mistaken for aliens, that the craft actually came from extraterrestrial technology in the beginning. As military aircraft continued to be developed, more and more technology kept coming and the aircrafts became more and more sophisticated. As sightings of these aircrafts continued, the general public and even some other members of the military didn't know what they were and so they were being reported as unidentified flying objects. And since this area is where they were being designed and tested, Area 51 became synonymous with this alien activity. Some say that the crafts that we were flying as the United States government, these increasingly sophisticated aircraft, were actually reverse engineered from alien or extraterrestrial spacecrafts that were obtained and stored in Area 51. As time went on and the government did release information about Area 51, uh, they began giving the general population, the world population, more information and confirmation about what they had and what's going on here. So now the government has admitted Area 51 exists, but that is about all. The Air Force released a statement saying specific activities and operations conducted there cannot be discussed. After confirming that Area 51 was indeed a real place, we also learned about the declassified information for various aircraft that had been mistaken for UFOs this entire time. Does that mean that none of the aircraft was built or reverse engineered from extraterrestrial technology? We don't know. But one man does. My name's Bob Lazar. I'm known for working at a classified base and reverse engineered alien spacecraft. Bob Lazar was a physicist that reportedly worked for Area 51 uh, under a specific region called S4. He claims to have reverse engineered a number of different alien spacecraft and helped the US government use it to design test and utilize alien technology in U.S. government aircraft. If you'd like to come along on your own extraterrestrial road trip to Area 51, you'll need to travel to Rachel, Nevada, and then ask one of the locals to give you directions to this secret dirt road that leads up to the gates of Area 51. Thanks everybody for joining us on our extraterrestrial road trip. This has been Carly Cottrell at Area 51 following the extraterrestrial highway. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. Please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this and